This is a topic I get asked about an absolute lot. Like <laughs> people ask me about this all the time and there are so many options. So I wanted to make an actual video about it instead of just listing them out in description and text every single time. So as you saw on the title or the thumbnail, this video was about what leopard geckos can eat. And I'm going to extend this to include cave geckos, to include African fat tail geckos, geckos that are kept quite similarly to leopard geckos. Cause I also have an African fat tail and a newly uh, welcome to home cave gecko that I'm so excited about if you haven't seen that video Either it's already up and you need to go watch it or it's coming. I don't know which one will happen first, but I'm very very excited So this video is about what kind of food you can offer them. It is not about why they're not eating That's a separate video So this video is about what you can feed a leopard gecko and similar geckos And I'm also going to include how you can offer food to them or how you can feed them I'm only going to be talking about normal geckos not geckos with special needs because they are in the minority And I've you know shown geckos <laughs> with special needs eating before so I think if you're that interested if you have have a special needs gecko and you're really that curious please go watch it in another video in my monday munchies um playlist it's all about me feeding my geckos actually if you've never fed a gecko before or you're confused about the process of feeding a gecko by hand or by tongs you should definitely go watch my monday munchies playlist it will show you literally how i feed my leopard geckos all 20 something of them so if you're curious about that i'll leave the playlist link below Disregarding that, it's important to know what you can feed them, what's good for them, and that you have options other than just tong feeding. I choose a tong feed because most of mine are special needs, but you can also feed in other ways. So let's get started. So I have a list I'm looking at right here. So if I look down, that's why. I just like to have all the information in front of me so I don't forget and then have to like make a video another time. Although I'm sure someday I will redo all these videos when I have more knowledge and better lighting and stuff. So. Basically, what you can feed your leopard geckos are dubia roaches, hornworms, superworms, mealworms. Those are the four I feed mine that are completely fine to feed on a regular basis. I know that you can also feed silkworms, but I'm not sure if silkworms are like a, more like a treat than they are a staple food. So one question that I get asked a lot is, if you feed superworms or mealworms, won't they eat out through your gecko's insides? That's some horror movie stuff, okay? I personally, and I've also never come across anyone who's had that experience, but I've never ever ever experienced an animal eating its way out of my leopard geckos, so I've never had a dubby roach do that, I've never had uh, a superworm do that, I've never had a mealworm do that, and I also have fed my mealworms to frogs, and I've never had a mealworm eat its way out of my frogs either. So really, that's just, I don't want to say a myth because I'm sure it came from somewhere and someone had that experience, but literally I've never met anybody who's had that experience with leopard geckos or even with my frogs, like I said, and so I, I can't, <laughs> I can't say that it's a real thing. It's completely safe to feed dewey roaches, hornworms, mealworms, or superworms. They won't eat their way out. They can bite. They do have teeth especially like big hornworms they've got some pinchers i can feel them bite the tongs sometimes if they're big enough and that's actually like an indicator that maybe you shouldn't offer that one or that you're supposed to like pretty morbidly crush a head first you can do that with any insect if you're worried about the insect biting your leopard gecko you can crush its head first i have never done this and i have special needs geckos i've never needed to none of them have ever been bitten i don't have that problem thankfully but it is a thing, so if you feel safer, you can crush the head of the insect before you offer it. Now, don't ever offer an insect that's too big for your leopard gecko. And the way that you know that it's too big is if the insect is wider than the space between your gecko's eyes. So if you notice, you can look at their eyes on the side of their head, and there's like that space between their eyes. Sometimes geckos who are really light have like black eye shadow or blue eye shadow. It's like their actual eyeball you can see through their skin because their skin's translucent. So in between that those black spaces or your actual gecko's eyelids you want to make sure that you're not feeding anything wider than that space that's the space of your gecko's throat basically if you feed something bigger your gecko could choke on it could have a hard time digesting it could have a hard time swallowing it so you really want to avoid obviously for safety reasons feeding anything that's wider than that this is for geckos of all ages if you have a baby gecko you're not going to want to give it you know a large superworm it's just not going to be able to swallow it. So for a lot of baby geckos, I offer small dubia roaches. I offer mealworms. That works out really well for them. Some geckos prefer mealworms to dubias. Of all ages, by the way, I have some picky geckos who refuse to eat superworms, but they'll eat mealworms. I have some geckos who won't even eat hornworms, and they're like a delicacy. So 
it's just each gecko is different so it really is about learning what your gecko will eat what your gecko likes to eat on a regular basis and i'll make a whole separate video about why my gecko might not be eating so if you're interested in that it'll probably come out sometime after this one so go ahead and watch that however that's it for another day this is for a gecko who is eating and not giving you any trouble because leopard geckos and other geckos will give you trouble in fact most reptiles will give you trouble when it comes to eating because they don't eat all year round it's like i said for another video so you can offer dubia superworm mealworm from a bowl i've never seen someone offer hornworms from a bowl they're typically something that you hand feed your gecko from like tongs they're usually fed as a treat because they're so expensive but they're actually really healthy for your gecko they have a lot of moisture a lot of calcium they're super good for your gecko so if you can get your hand on some hornworms that's good. I get my hornworms, actually I get most of my feeders from Great Lakes hornworms, but you can also get them from Josh's Frogs. You can also get them from Rainbow Mealies. I've heard great things about all three companies. The thing to know about Dubious, Superworms, Mealworms, and Hornworms, which are what I primarily offer, is that hornworms are like super healthy, super delicious, super juicy, big, green, colorful. They're great for any picky eaters or any gecko that starts to go off food for whatever reason. If you offer a hornworm, that sometimes entices them and restarts their diet. A great staple diet to offer is Dubia Roaches, and they're pretty easy to breed, they just take a long time to build up a colony, so if you wanted to do that, that's something that's totally fine, but just keep in mind that not all size Dubia can be fed to leopard geckos because they get really big. They're technically the healthiest food in terms of like their fat to moisture to protein ratio or whatever. You can look into all that yourself. I don't have like the specifics of how it breaks down, I just know that they're better after like years of learning about it and hearing other people say that they're the best, so that's what I know. Mealworms and and superworms are pretty similar in terms of their health ratio, like what they have to offer, except mealworms have a more dense exoskeleton that's harder to digest than superworms, and superworms also get a lot bigger than mealworms and they're harder to breed. So there's, you know, different facets to each one, but my absolute favorite to offer between the two is superworms. I'd rather offer superworms every other time when it comes to having to offer mealworms. I have one gecko who will only eat mealworms and when I'm feeding everybody else in the room superworms, I have to stop and hand feed him each individual mealworm. He's the longest to feed, but that's okay because I love my Merlin, so it's not a big deal. But I prefer superworms, one, because they come in all kinds of different sizes. You can find small ones, you can find big ones. Well, I don't know if they get this big, but they get pretty big. That's They get really big and you can feed them to other animals too, like bearded dragons, whereas you shouldn't feed mealworms to bearded dragons because of the exoskeleton being hard to digest. It isn't a problem for leopard geckos in my experience. I have fed Merlin hornworms and mealworms for the longest time because he won't eat anything else and I've never had a problem with him. So it is possible to feed mealworms and not have any digestive problems to leopard geckos that is. In terms of like a health ratio, they're pretty similar to superworms. I just prefer superworms because they come in different sizes and they're easy to tongue feed and my geckos really enjoy them, like thoroughly enjoy superworms. So aside from dubia superworms, mealworms, and hornworms, there are other foods that you can offer your leopard gecko, but that I don't and I'll explain to you why. So one food that I actually do offer but only once a month or less are waxworms and waxworms are this like little moth larva, little white grubby, like they're kind of cute, they got little fuzzies on them. I thought hornworms were cute too to begin with, but then I felt them bite my tongs once and I was like, oh, no thanks. Waxworms are just like this little chubby delicious treat and I have never ever had an animal reject them ever. Even geckos in my house that aren't tong fed that refuse to eat off tongs will eat off tongs when it comes to the waxworms. They absolutely love them. And the thing about waxworms is they offer like no nutrition. They're pretty much just fat. You really shouldn't offer waxworms as a staple because they can become addicting and a lot of people who are like afraid the first time that their leopard gecko goes off food, which by the way, again, it's normal. I'll talk about it in another video. If your leopard gecko goes off food, they'll immediately like, oh, I know they'll eat waxworms. And so they offer waxworms and waxworms and waxworms. And then eventually the gecko refuses any other kind of food because they want waxworms. That's the delicious food and they're not willing to eat anything else. This is called waxworm addiction. It's very bad for your gecko because they're not nutritious enough and they're super fatty. Your gecko is gaining a bunch of weight and it's also not gaining healthy weight. It's not healthy weight, it's obesity basically. I've seen a lot of really unhealthy, obese, fat geckos. I've actually experienced uh, waxworm addiction to two geckos that I adopted. It's really terrible. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, I have a video about waxworms where I talk about them and uh, I also show my geckos eating them and I talk about like in the very beginning of the video, don't do this more than like once a month. Don't do this if your gecko's off food. 
just gotta be careful with them, but they are a good treat for leopard geckos, especially if you're trying to put a little bit of weight on them just once or twice a month. Shouldn't be an issue, but as long as they're eating other food as well. One common food that I see people feed their leopard geckos is crickets, and I prefer not to feed crickets to anything if I can help it. I feed crickets to my frogs, but that's not all the time. They also get little dubias, they get little mealworms, little hornworms, they get tiny waxworms, they get all kinds of stuff. But when I have crickets, I only give it to my firebelly toads, and that's because crickets suck. They're terrible. They're stinky, they escape, and they're just really not nutritionally dense enough for an appropriate meal. When I see people who feed just crickets that are leopard geckos, they're often kind of skinny or, you know, just not fully grown all the way. And I have actually experienced this firsthand with a gecko that I got named Renly. She came to me um, almost stick skinny. She was so thin and she was only being fed crickets. And the thing is, when you drop crickets in an enclosure for the animal to hunt, the crickets can, one, hide, two, escape, or three, just dart away whenever the gecko's going to try and catch it. Most geckos are okay at hunting, okay, not great. Most are okay. So when it comes to crickets, they're really hard to catch because they're super fast and they can jump and they can climb really easily. So most times your gecko isn't even going to get all the crickets that you put in the enclosure. And if you leave crickets in the enclosure, that's also dangerous because they can bite your gecko. I have literally seen a person have a hole in their leopard gecko. The crickets left in there didn't have anything to eat. So they bit the leopard gecko and actually made a hole on its body. It was horrific. It was so gross. And I have talked to other people who have, you know, said that they have, through other people, experienced crickets in the enclosure biting animals. And I just, I won't mess with crickets. I won't do it. And considering all of mine have special needs, I can't tongue feed little tiny crickets. So it's just not happening. Like, in order to feed enough crickets, I'd be in here for like five hours instead of three hours when I hand feed everyone. And like I said, not only are they messy and stinky and escape and they can bite your gecko, but they're just not nutritionally sufficient. If you offer them along with other things, like if you offer crickets and mealworms and dubia, that's the best diet to possibly offer and I'll talk about that later. But if you offer crickets in addition to another type of food, then you're okay. But if you're just offering crickets and if you're leaving them in the enclosure, I wouldn't recommend that. Unless you're watching your gecko hunt all of them or you're helping your gecko hunt them or you put your gecko in a separate enclosure while they're hunting the crickets, then it's probably not the best idea to give them crickets. If you're assisting them, that's the best way. So if you're just making sure that like they're getting every cricket, the cricket can't be left behind to escape or climb out of the enclosure, or, well, that would be escaping, but you know what I mean, to get out of the way of being eaten. Just make sure your gecko is actually eating the meal that you're providing. It's the same thing with like, if you have an insect in a bowl, for example, leave it in a bowl inside of like a bin for a night and see if it can claw out of the bowl and into the bin. That way you know it's a safe bowl. Even some bowls that are sold as safe for insects can still be escaped by insects. It just depends. So it really is like making sure you can test it out. And if you see this bowl right here, I think it's from the brand You and Me maybe from Petco. It's in the like hamster or gerbil or like a guinea pig section. I don't know. It's it's in like the rodent section, not the reptile section. But the thing about it is nothing has been able to escape it. No superworms, no mealworms, no dubia. As long as you make sure that the insect's body is like I don't know. I would say that like, if it's like a worm, for example, if you take that worm's body like and measure half of it, if half of it isn't bigger than the bowl, then it shouldn't be able to escape unless you have like something on the inside of the bowl. For example, when I got my cave gecko recently, she had a bunch of baby dubia in a bowl, but like left a bunch of the dubia skin, a bunch of dirt, a bunch of rapashi calcium powder is what it looked like anyway, uh, like to build up and they just walked right out of the little mountain of crap that was in there and I was like, What's the point of having a bowl if they're not gonna be in it because it's too dirty? It just didn't make any sense. But anyways, I found all the dewy roaches in the enclosure. Like there was like eight of them just sitting underneath of the cork bark, just living out their dewy roach lives. And there's one more food I want to address, and that's pinky mice. Pinky mice. What are you doing, Jackson? He just kicked all around over there trying to get comfy. But anyway, pinky mice are in my opinion, not an option. I would never feed pinky mice to my leopard geckos. And it's not just because I don't like feeding mice to things, which if you didn't know, that's the reason why I'll never have snakes. I made that video, got a few dislikes and a few negative comments, but I was anticipating that, so it's okay. But 
I don't recommend feeding pinky mice to leopard geckos and a lot of people feel this way as well especially like people that I, I'm friends with who are breeders and who are hobbyists they don't like it because they're super fattening and also they're really unnecessary leopard geckos don't have to eat pinky mice to survive when there's so many other options that are less fattening and they offer more health and also your gecko doesn't have like the risk of choking on a superworm of appropriate size rather than a pinky mouse which is like substantial compared to this little like thin superworm so I don't personally feed pinkies, I will never feed pinkies, and I don't recommend feeding them to your leopard gecko because they're a completely unnecessary treat. I just personally don't think they're a necessary protein source to offer when there are already so many others, and they're just, they don't have enough nutrients that I'm like, oh, that's probably really important for a leopard gecko to have, you know, they, they offer a lot of fat, they can be hard to digest just not worth it in my opinion. So let's review. There are a number of insects that you can feed your leopard gecko that are good for them, including dubia roaches, hornworms, superworms, and mealworms of the appropriate size. You can give crickets as well as waxworms on occasion, especially if you are offering a varied diet, like I said earlier I would touch on and now I have remembered to touch on it. Um, a varied diet is absolute best. Whenever people ask me what to feed their leopard gecko, I say variety is the spice of life. I said that like five times in my last live stream because it's so important to offer more than just one food source to your leopard gecko to make sure that you are covering all of their health needs. There is one thing some insects will offer compared to others. So now that you know that there are a number of insects that you can possibly feed your leopard gecko and that it's better to offer a variety and what insects to only offer on occasion, let's talk about how you can feed your leopard gecko. So you can offer a bowl of appropriate size, like this one perhaps, that would allow your gecko to reach into the bowl, grab the food, and not allow the food to escape into the enclosure. You can also let your gecko free hunt, but you're going to want to be a, a, in attendance for this. You're going to want to be able to watch it and make sure that your gecko is eating the food, because otherwise the food item will just scurry away and hide, and then your gecko actually won't be eating. You absolutely want to make sure that your leopard gecko is eating so that it is going to survive. You know, eating is essential. So I would recommend watching your gecko eating if you're going to let it hunt. Whether that's in the enclosure or in a separate container is up to you. You can take your gecko out and put it in a container and let it hunt. A lot of geckos will not eat this way. It's a matter of like discomfort, like you've displaced them and so they don't want to eat that way. Some will, so it's worth trying if that's something you're interested in, but most won't. You can also drop the food from above. So if you have tweezers, you can just whoop and drop it down right in front of your gecko's face because a lot of times geckos will just wait for you because they're that hungry they'll just sit and wait and like oh my owner has come it is food time because that's what we mean to them we are sources of food and so what you can do is just get some easy to hold tweezers or tongs whatever you prefer as long as they're dull ended so that your gecko doesn't possibly get hurt or you don't impact the insect and kill it before you have a chance to feed it off take it drop it down and your gecko should just dart out and eat it or hunt it down real slow like and do a tail wag and then eat it whatever the preference is. Some geckos are really animated and some just like to get it done, you know? Each gecko is different. However, there's also still one more option that you can possibly do and that is to tong feed or hand feed your leopard gecko. This is totally not necessary. Some prefer this to others and for some it's an absolute requirement. Like for geckos who have special needs, like most of mine, I have to hand feed them because they can't hunt on their own. So what I do is take the rounded tweezers and hold the worms right in front of them so that they can latch onto it and eat it. That's just how it works for me. You don't have to do that. Obviously, if you don't have a special needs leopard gecko, you can use any of the aforementioned methods, including the bowl and the drop tongs and the feeding in its separate enclosure or like letting them hunt in their enclosure. It's all up to you. Oh, one last thing I'll address is how often to feed your leopard gecko. People ask me this as well, or how much to feed. Basically, I offer two medium superworms or one large superworm every feeding and I feed every other day. So I'll feed Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, you get what I'm saying? Every other day. Sometimes if it's like especially when no one's eating like in the winter time, I will skip it and I'll go every two days. So I'll do a Monday, I'll skip Tuesday, skip Wednesday, do a Thursday. Yeah, like that. So that's how I'll do it like in winter time but in summer because they're eating so much and they need to grow so they can lose all that weight in winter then you definitely want to offer food every other day that's for full-grown leopard geckos for juvenile leopard geckos what i do is i offer food every single day with one to two skip days a week to allow for digestion and that's let's see 
let's just make up a schedule so i'll feed monday tuesday skip wednesday thursday friday skip saturday feed sunday monday skip tuesday you get what i'm saying just so that they're having enough time for digestion but also still getting more than the other leopard geckos because they are growing and i have a whole separate video about how to properly supplement leopard geckos so go watch that this is not about supplementation and also before you feed any insects, you're gonna wanna gut load them. Gut loading an insect means offering it food that's healthy for them and healthy for your leopard gecko before feeding the insect to your gecko. So what you should do is keep a container with your bugs like in the container and put food in there for them. So things that are healthy, you know, squash, not potato, don't put potato in there. Squash, carrots, uh, broccoli, um, turnip green stems or like any sort of like big leafy green that's going to offer calcium you know you have to offer them actual substantial food protein sources calcium sources vitamins that you actually want the animals to have in them before you feed them to your animals get what i'm saying if you're offering just insects that don't have any sort of like proper food in them that haven't been fed anything but like bran or something really like like a potato for example a potato is not going to offer the proper nutrition that you need and so you don't just want to offer like if you're feeding an insect to your leopard gecko that hasn't had like healthy foods in it your gecko is not going to benefit from that gut loading is absolutely essential you can use any of the foods that i just mentioned but you can also look up other foods basically any healthy table scraps sometimes i'll eat broccoli and if i have like didn't want to eat the stem you know i eat like the florets at the top or florets whatever they're pronounced and i just take the stem and i drop it in there and they go wild they eat that and they'll also eat carrots and they'll also eat all kinds of stuff so it's really important to gut load your insects make sure that your leopard gecko is getting the absolute best insect or nutrition that it possibly can okay so to round everything off we have talked about the best insects to offer which are dubia superworm mealworm and hornworm we have talked about how you can offer them which would be in a bowl by free feeding tongue dropping or by hand feeding we have made sure that you know that you cannot feed insects that are larger than the space between your gecko's eyes that pinky mice, if you ever feed them, must be a treat. Waxworms are definitely a treat. And that crickets are a supplemental food that you definitely want to offer other foods with. Variety is the spice of life. And we've also told you that you must gut load your insects. And we've also touched on the fact that leopard geckos don't need to eat every single day and that they should eat every other day to every two days unless they are juveniles. Last but not least, as with any care video, I am just one person. I can only offer my own experiences and you should go listen to other people's experiences in terms of how to feed leopard geckos. I think that's everything. This is a very long video, but like I said, very important lots of information in it and i hope that you found it informational i hope you found it insightful if you found it useful leave a comment down below actually if you found it not useful leave a comment down below as well because i'd like to know that if you'd like to see more care tips and care videos and cute videos and all kinds of reptile stuff please hit that subscribe button also hit the bell to turn on notifications please check the links down below for all our social media where you can see all these lovely geckos and other animals as well as all kinds of stuff god there's a patreon donation link there's an email if you want to contact me if you ever have any questions about this leave them in the comments down below send me an email send me a message on social media i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can which should be within a day if not less all right you guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye